Hey there everyone, this is Matt Heimlich. Uh, I just wanted to take a minute to show off a tool I've been working on here. Um, hoping to release very soon, hopefully by the end of the week. And just wanted to make this short video and kind of gauge some reaction and uh, maybe get a feel for what people want to see out of this. Um, while there's still time for me to go in and change things. So yeah, as you might recognize, this is the uh, Centel model. If I zoom out. Um, so what I've been working on is an animation tool that is based on the tool present in Presto, which is Pixar's animation system. Um, if you ever see a video of them animating on their characters, uh, you can see that a lot of their animation is done directly on character without the need for any widgets at all. It's a very cool system. I encourage you to go check it out if you've never seen it before. Um, but yeah, so for the past few months, uh, I've been kind of bouncing around in my head a way to do this in Blender. Uh, and then recently another technical artist came up with a similar tool for 3D Studio Max. Uh, I really loved his workflow, um, I really loved how the tool worked, and I decided that it was time that Blender had something similar. So maybe about two weeks ago I jumped in and started coding, and uh, this is what I've got so far. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. Um, as you can see, uh, I've got this panel here, it's called Animat Tools. Uh, that's not a final name, but uh, unless I come up with something better, that will probably stick. Um, as you can see here, I've got what's called a face zone list, and you can see there are a bunch of zones defined here. As we move down, we can name them. Uh, now, what you see here is kind of the automatic naming convention, um, which, uh, as you can see, it just kind of puts zone and then appends a letter to the end of it. You can set your own zone names, and uh, they work just fine. Uh, here we have a zone target type. You can see right now it's set to shape keys. If we set to bone transforms, um, it will change the interface to accept a rig. So if I go in, grab a rig, it'll let me specify a bone within that rig. And then you can set the type of transform to use and the channel that you want to be controlling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to shape keys for the time being. So I've gone ahead and uh, set up a bunch of controls for this character already. So yeah, let's go ahead and see how it works. So right now the hotkey to start is Control-Alt-A. Um, yeah, and here we go. So as you can see, it's as simple as clicking on the mesh and uh, controlling what you want to control. So what does this mean for you as an artist? Uh, first of all, this means no more widgets clogging up the viewport. Uh, second of all, if you animate with shape keys, it means no more digging around in the shape key panel or the uh, end panel to try and find the correct control to kind of tweak around. It's a very fast and very interactive way of modeling. Um, very similar to, uh, I guess if you ever played with an action figure or something as a kid, um, it really is just grab and pull um, and it does exactly what you'd expect it to do. Um, so as far as the interface goes, I've tried to make this literally as simple as possible to set up. Um, mostly everything is completely automatic, so you don't actually have to go in and type anything. Um, it'll grab all of the uh, data for you and set everything up automatically. Uh, so we'll go ahead here and uh, I'll set up a zone that doesn't exist yet. So I hit escape because the animation tool is modal, so uh, while you are in the animation mode, um, you won't be able to click anything in the interface. Um, I've left the navigation controls in, so you can still rotate around, use the numpad to uh, switch your views and everything. Um, but if you want to do anything else in the interface, you do have to exit out of the mode. So I hit escape, exit out of the mode, and we will hop into edit mode to define a zone. So as you can see here, we have a couple shape keys if I scroll down uh, for the brow. Now we've got uh, brow inner up and brow inner down, um, and I will go ahead and set those up. So it's really, really, really simple. I mean, it really couldn't be simpler. You just select the faces that you want to use, uh, and then you set your zones. So this is the left side of her body, so we will do brow inner up dot left, um, and we will set that to the up mouse binding. Uh, and then we will grab the brow inner down and set that to the down mouse binding. Um, the way that this works is uh, you have the set button and this will set to that uh, field whatever you have selected in your shape keys menu. So when you're working with this tool I do recommend just putting it, uh, grabbing it and putting it right above the shape keys menu. 
So we've got that set. Now uh, let's give it a name. We'll call this brow uh, inner up down. And then we just hit set zone. Uh, we can really easily do the other side by just hitting select mirror. And for the mirror, we will just do inner right and uh, inner right up and inner right down. We'll call that brow inner up down uh, dot r. So we'll set that as well. You can see it appends those two to the list. Um, and if we go into the animation mode, we can just grab it and drag it up and down. Uh, right click resets its value. You can do the same for the other side. Um, so yeah, really could not be simpler. Um, as the script exists right this second, the um, bone transforms are not implemented in the main script, but I, I do have them working in a separate script. Um, so everything's coded. Uh, I'm really just at the point now where I'm putting it all into one application and then going in and kind of cleaning up uh, little bugs, places where it's rough around the edges. Um, and of course, putting in uh, cases to kind of stop users from breaking it for doing things that aren't expected. There's a few other things that I still need to implement. Uh, I would like to be able to add the option to uh, click a zone here and then have it repopulate and you can edit things. Um, as it is right now, once you create a zone, you can't go back and edit it again. Uh, so that's something that I need to add as well. But for the most part, this is more or less complete and ready to use. Like I said, I hope to release this probably by the end of this week. Now it is a tool that I'm planning on releasing on the market. Um, I haven't decided on pricing for it yet, but uh, it's not going to be anything extravagant. The similar tool for uh, 3D Studio Max goes for 150 euros a head. I think that's a little much. Um, so it'll probably be priced you know, in line with the existing add-ons that are on the market. Um, I am also, uh, after the market release, planning on releasing a free version. So I'm still kind of working out uh, what the feature set of the free version would be compared to uh, the market version. Um, but if I can get to a place where uh, I feel like there's still a good feature set worth releasing for free um, while still having the other option available for uh, people who maybe want to animate like this more seriously, uh, I will definitely release a free version of this as well to the community. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of this tool and uh, over the next week I will continue kind of working on feedback, polishing this tool up and uh, if all goes according to plan, hopefully you will be able to grab this on Friday. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you later.